everyone. Welcome to Tech Down Over. Today we've got a great guest, Kurt Rogers. He's back from Think Tank. And joining me, my good friend from Down Under, it is... Hi there. Jeff Blanchard, yes. And I was just thinking, it was just an ideal thing. I was looking at one of my videos earlier and my camera bag, and it was the same bag I took to Los Angeles in 1984. So I think I need a new one. Oh, you need a think tank. <laughs> Definitely. I can guarantee you that. Well, let's get started. We always need to dry off after that intro. That's hey, right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kurt, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, you guys. It's been uh, a long time. Love it. And it has been a long time, and you have delivered on everything. You know, last time you were telling us, oh. I got production manager bags coming out. And we went, really? Mm -hmm. And and I got yeah. them. I think like a couple of weeks later, I bought two of them. And those things have gone cross-country about five times with me already, as we've done video shoots in different places. Uh, they are wonderful for traveling. We we have the the thicker production bag and then the slightly taller one. We don't have the brand new one you came out with, so we got to get that one. Uh, they're wonderful bags. Um, you know, we've struggled with traveling with equipment before with just not great bags, or or you have something like a Pelican, which weighs eight hundred pounds, and you know it's it just doesn't work that well. These bags are wonderful. They don't weigh that much. Uh, I tell them, we send them across country 200 bucks for two bags on, on FedEx ground. Get there within three, four days, life is good. That's great. Um, yeah. yeah, the, uh, the air, you know, our airport bags, even the, uh, you know, the, the large uh, logistic managers, we, yep. we, you know, pack them and ship them. And um, even, uh, you know, we've got a thing going with SKB now doing the inserts. So if you'd need that big, you know, heavy, uh, you know, bomb proof <laughs> bag we've hmm. pretty much got it that's good i haven't seen i haven't taken a look at that one so th that's brand new well actually we've been doing it for a little while probably about two years now where we're doing the inserts for skb for the, the inserts. hard cases okay yeah yeah so it's uh um, it's pretty popular uh it it really is a uh, a new thing for us but we've uh we've decided that that you know is part of our uh our our mission to uh, keep working with other companies. That's good. Now you have a new, I think, international bag. It's another air. We have the original TSA bag, which was pretty good. I mean, it carried a lot of stuff. The only problem we had with it was in those days, we couldn't put a laptop in it. There was no room for a laptop. The new one now has a full laptop. I think it was a 15 or 17 inch laptop can go in there and. It looks pretty similar to the one we have. I'm going to be getting that soon because it has all of the the new features that that we wanted. But I've traveled many times with the with the TSA bag. Never had a problem. Never get stopped. Um, carry them. They fit right inside. Even the smaller planes. I've had them. I've fit in 737s, Airbus, Airbus A321s. They always fit. And yeah, uh, that's a great bag. Um, it's just really nice. And people say, does it have rollers? I go. No, but rollers don't work well all the time, especially when you hit carpeting. And some airports yeah, no, have a lot of rollers, carpeting. Uh, our rollers will fly through the carpeting. Um, oh, will they? Trust me, I've done so many roller rolling through airports with carpeting, and and uh, you know we just uh, did a trip to uh, Portugal earlier this year, and the cobblestones there are incredible, oh. and the, our bags just flew right through the cobblestones. It's just. It's amazing how our uh, wheel design has uh, oh, that's you know, great. changed my life. And they're quiet. You know, the, the last thing you want to do is make a bunch of noise rolling yeah. through an airport. Yeah. I've got the Samsonites when I travel for the big travel, you know, for the, for the uh, clothing bags. And on, on carpet, it, it's a struggle. You're, you're pushing hard, especially I've got, I've got my airporter and, you know, in one hand. I got the other one. I'm pushing one and pulling the other. And the pulling is a lot easier. Especially when you're in a trade show and, and, and they carpet the whole darn show and you're trying to get your equipment out there and it's like a mile walk to get to the, it's it's tiring. So pulling has been great. And, and even though the older ones you have, have the big wheels. So they don't, they're not tiring. They, they run beautifully. Well, that's good. Well, I'm really glad you guys are uh, still flying with our, with our bags. I mean, oh, we, love them. 
you know, we <laughs> we uh, you know, have ultralight, uh, you know, bags now that uh, fit in the CRJs, and uh, yeah. if they don't fit over the head, they'll they. You know what? Sometimes there's more room underneath the seat than there is yeah. um, above, and so uh, there's all kinds of places to stash your bag, but. Leaving your equipment down below uh, in the mm. plane is just not that recommended. No. Um, I we try not to do that. <laughs> no. But you guys, you know, I'm always amazed because I go, they're done. They've had it. We've reached the pinnacle. Okay. So we've reached, that's the end word. And then, you know, next year, the whole mess of new bags with new things. And you go, they did it again. Wow. Oh, we've, uh, we've got so many new bags. It's ridiculous. We just... Uh, we just announced um, like four new products. We redesigned our retro B2s. Um, so the, our retrospective bags, they come in five sizes. Yep. We also done, we've done uh, a, uh, uh, a lens case. It's called Lens Case Duo. Basically, it's a bag that you can, little bags that you can put lenses in. You can mm. actually carry them on your shoulder with a, with a strap. You could throw, you can put them on a belt. You can also just wrap your lens up and throw it in your bag if that's what you want to and you can access this with two different zippers so you, you, a zipper goes around the top or over the front and they, they work really good um, we also uh, basically done our re, redid our uh, rain covers the hydros we call mm -hmm. it the v3 mm -hmm. now and that's coming pretty soon and also we made a emergency rain cover which um, right now is uh is coming also um and it's just one of those things where you can just carry in your bag all kind of crunched up and when yeah. uh when you know you you need to you know keep your camera out of the rain you can just throw this thing on pretty quick so that's been uh, uh part of our uh you know our new launch but um as far as everything else that's been going on the company itself we you know, we have a mind shift also. And so what we did is we merged our think tank and mind shift together into one company. Mm. And that's just been the most recent thing we've done. And uh, I mean, we've had, we literally had uh, think tank at, at our trade shows. We'd have think tank on one wall and mind shift on the other. And people would walk over and look at the mind shift stuff and they go, <laughs> well, who's this company? And we're like, oh, well, it's mind shift. It's our other company. And so now we merge it's just so it's not as confusing as it used to be. What what does MindShift specialize in? Mostly outdoor uh, uh, gear. Um, you know, back you know people that want to carry their uh, their equipment and in the outdoors and uh, you know different things like uh, we have uh, uh, different kinds of access uh, back access so you can you don't have to you know put your backpack down and get it all dirty and then put it back on so if you put it down you can put it on the the, the front of it and it's open up the okay. back so it stays clean against you and we have um uh protection cloths and things like that that uh you know you can also nice. use there's just you know it's almost too much to 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 uh, uh you know remember i mean they the the new uh some of the other stuff that we've come up with you know the backlight 18 which is a pretty big bag um, for the uh, in the mind shift series, uh, you know, we've also got uh, you know the turnstiles, which is kind of a cool bag. Um, the exposure 13 is kind of a a bag that's along the lines of like a retro, but it's kind of uh, I wouldn't say bulletproof, but it's storm proof. And hmm. uh, it, it, you know, it so it just goes on and on and on <laughs> i've got to check out your line now yeah you would love my wife she's funny every time we go to sammy's sammy's camera in la you know we've been shopping there for a long long time and um i'm i'm usually in the video section and i see her just kind of run off and she's gone and two minutes later she comes back with two think tank bags all the time every time we go it's like look at these look at these they're new <laughs> all right which one do you want both <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I kid one you not. So we wind up with more bags, and 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 I go, "Why did you want that one? It's new. I like it." <laughs> and I, uh, I I have the same problem. You know, I'm married to Deanne Fitzmorris, and she yes. uh, has more bags than uh, you can shake a stick <laughs> at. And then once once I find a new bag that I like, and I move into uh, like my um, my shapeshifter, which I I love the bag, and I've kind of customized it with some different kinds of poles that, I mean, I like to squeeze everything together really tight. Mm -hmm. And then she took that bag and uh, I haven't seen that lately. <laughs> and uh, so she's, she's taken off on a road trip again today. And uh, uh, 
And I think she, you know, got into our, we have a closet in our garage. I mean, it's just the length of our garage and it has equipment, um, cameras, uh, lighting equipment and tons of bags in it. And uh, it's just pandemonium going down there and trying <laughs> to find stuff. Uh, but I'm really excited about all this new mirrorless and what's going on yeah. because we do make, uh, you know, a lot of uh, bags for mirrorless cameras and, uh, and the, the, you know, and I really like the fact that all these ca these camera companies, you know, Nikon and Canon and Sony, and mm -hmm. they're getting into this. And the the new cameras, I've been able to play with the Z7, and uh, yeah. I uh, I really like it. Um, I'm gonna have to, uh, uh, you know, beat on the people at Nikon to to figure out how I can get one. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of my favorite bags that I have is one of the retro bags. The uh, the um, the messenger bag, the I think it's the third largest. Um, as you go up the line, I love that bag. It I've, it has gone many places with me, and I'll use the bigger ones for some things. But I love carrying just the one or two cameras and some lenses, and it's amazing what fits in that. It's I just love it, yeah. and most people can't really tell it's a camera bag. Well, that was kind of the whole idea in the very mm -hmm. beginning is to make. Uh, uh, camera bags that really didn't look like camera <clears throat> bags and people yeah. would want to carry them around and um yeah it's it's a tough thing but you know once you get popular then people go oh that's the retro you know and they <laughs> they know it from like, you know 35 yeah. you know feet away but and we were you know every time we've traveled and traveled in different countries and things and you know somebody will be carrying one of our bags and uh you know it's almost like you know, if we're if there's a group of us, we almost you know attack this person. Like, where'd you get that bag? And you know, and everything because we want to know where you know how they found out and where they <laughs> mm -hmm. where they bought it and things like that. So it's always exciting finding you know your stuff in a different world. So it's great. That is good. Hey, Jeff. Sorry, I keep uh, my my, my uh, stream keeps freezing, so I keep missing a bit. To pe everybody keeps freezing, so I keep missing out on the conversation. Oh. But what I was going to ask. Uh, uh, Kurt, as I said, I'm in the market for a new bag, and since I bought my first bag, things have really changed. Back in the day, bags were just to put things into transport from A to B, but now they're uh, an all-purpose thing. Like I've got uh, the hand uh, handheld gimbal, the DSLR, and I'm looking for one that's just had because you need things to just put it in, but to whip it out on in a few seconds set it up and just do that what's what's your most popular one for that i assume probably one of the backpacks so i you know a, a camera with the gimbal on it connected already or uh, separately oh if you've got one with it but i wouldn't expect you to have one with it <laughs> but that would be good if you could have one with the camera so, connected so but i think that would be good I've actually been using, uh, um, I've had a few gimbals. I've had, um, you know, a, um, what is it, the Merlin for the longest time. And I, ha I don't have a new gimbal. I'd like to get like a Ronin. But what I was, have been using is the, uh, one of our, um, our holsters, our digital holster. And, it, and it, it works for it, but we're still in the business for, uh, you know, looking at new bags and things. And we're actually looking at uh, the gimbals and how we can... Mm change people's lives by making something that uh uh you know will uh work for what you're talking about well, I guess what, so. hey what what the ideal one kurt would be is like you said one with, that will put it into the bag but also that will hold the gimbal so i could have it over my shoulder so you could do a walk and talk and it could just do that behind the scenes that would be great yeah now you know well that's what we're all about i'm writing that down <laughs> Well, Kurt, think um, as he's talking about that, I'm thinking kind of a variation of a tripod bag that has kind of two levels, one for the gimbal and one where you could put the, kind of the camera laying on top of it. That would be interesting. Yeah. No, that would be. And they can just be. pull the whole thing out. Yeah. No, I mean, they're, I mean, why, even, why ever put it away? <laughs> yeah. So, some of my, uh, some of my philosophy about camera bags, you know, always was, uh, you know, if you if you put your camera in a bag, you can't shoot. So I always thought like camera bags are just for storage. You know, I mean, put my cameras in a bag and then I would store them. When I take the bag out, I take the camera out, put it on, and go for a walk or go shoot something or do something else. And uh, having um, you know, camera bag companies really changed the way I think about storing cameras and 
you know, and moving around with cameras. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of ways to uh, get your, you know, stuff from A to B without having to, uh, um, you know, mess, you know, uh, get it dirty or, you know, break it and things <laughs> mm -hmm. like that. So now I, uh, I, I do still, you know, if I'm shooting or if I'm going anywhere, I usually have a camera out, but I still take a lot of, um, you know, other things, you know, other extra lenses and batteries and things like that. So I'm, I'm kind of a retro person, um, you know, just being a, uh, a, a, you know, classic old time, you know, like a shooter kind of guy. <laughs> and uh, so I still love that feel to it. But, um, you know, I know that there's a lot of, a uh, lot of people that want to carry a lot of equipment around and they still, um, and I, I, I suggest rolling is a good thing. You mm -hmm. know, the older you get, the, the harder it is to uh, carry that big giant camera bag with all your stuff in it. And, you know, and they do get heavy. And when you're carrying oh. a lot of gear on a trip, it's amazing how heavy they get. Yeah, I uh, mean, we, we'll do trade shows and I'm, you know, I've seen you at other trade shows and, you know, we have like ultralight backpacks. I mean, this thing mm -hmm. is super light and there people look at it and go, well, it's pretty light. But you put a bunch of cameras in that, it's not going to be very ultralight anymore. <laughs> yeah. But you know what's Especially nice? All the, all the new materials, like the microfibers, and the, it's amazing what, how much they can hold. Yeah. No. It uh, the, it's just incredible. Um, I, like I said, we went to Portugal, and um, I took an airport um, security, kind of the big bag, um, and I kind of packed it half and half with camera equipment and clothes. And uh, once I got there, uh, we ended up buying some things, and I just couldn't believe how much more stuff I could get into that bag. It was just yeah, incredible. it's it's pretty um, amazing. Oh, by the way, I didn't make a disclaimer at the beginning of the show. We're not getting paid to say this. Kurt's a guest. We actually like Kurt, but we love his products. So this is us. We we buy and like his products. It has nothing to do with him paying us. Uh, so just want to make that clear because a lot of people think everything you're seeing is always being, no, no, we actually really do love his product. If, I'm in a, it's kind of dark around me, but there's one, two, maybe three, four, five, six, there's about eight think tanks just in the studio right here. I'm not even talking about my office, which is on the other side of the studio. I think I've got about four more. So we have a lot of, That's we have great. a lot of think tanks. We, we like the stuff yeah. and I've got them at home too. <laughs> So, is there a particular uh, a shape that you 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 know you kind of tend to? What's your bag? What's your go-to bag? Because that's the one of the questions we always ask. Probably people. the it was I think it was called the TSA bag originally. I guess it's the Airporter. It's a fairly large one. It has the the bigger wheels on the bottom, and it, it carries. You can carry two full DSLRs, a ton of lenses, and like you said, you could take out half of it and put in clothes and a lot of gear. So that's one we usually carry, or I usually take around. The Messenger I live with, um, I've got that a lot. I, I tend to carry that on a daily basis, usually. It's my go-to bag for just about weekends. I've always got that. So if I ever need to take a picture on the fly, that's it. It's so yeah. quick to just pop it out, take a shot, put it back in, and and keep going. Um, when we travel... Do you yeah. Do you always carry a laptop when you travel? Or, I mean, when you're just out shooting for the day? No, the only time we laptop? carry the laptop is on the long trips or when we're flying. And and right now I'm carrying a small Alienware bag for the laptop because I can't fit them in my in my think tanks that I have. Mine are about three years old, the big one, the bigger ones we're carrying. So we were talking just the other day about, I need to upgrade. I need to upgrade my airport bag to the international, I think it's the international one that now has a compartment for a laptop. Um, right. And that right. would be, that. that's probably the perfect one for travel for me. Because I would put the laptop, that gets rid of one bag I don't have to carry. And it would be perfect. And other than that, we travel, well, we don't travel anymore with these. We ship them. And that's the producer bags, the production bags. Those are great. Right. The logistic production bags are wonderful. We, we carry a full video studio in those. We carry two bags. Lighting, microphones, cameras, two to four cameras, um, a, a heavy-duty laptop like a Republic of Gaming or, a, or an Alienware big laptop. And we run shows when we go to trade shows or events. And, and those bags come with us, and man, they are wonderful. No, so. they, they, they really are. Um, we've got, uh, in my personal lighting kit, I've got a, 
uh, Airport International, mm -hmm. which is kind of our, our smaller. We've got an airport security and an airport um, international. The international. Which is the bigger, the security? One. Which is the, the bigger one? The security is the bigger one. I need yeah, to get the, the security, security probably. Security. Okay. Yeah. And so in the international, I have a set of uh, a Profoto B, uh, B2s. Mm -hmm. And then in uh, a Logistics Manager 50, I think I've got a whole uh, Profoto uh, uh, D1 set. So, wow. uh, you That's know, good. And, and everything in it, um, you know, all the, all my jelly rolls and light stands and stuff. I never, you know, I drag it all over the place and never use it. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's fun to have. You have it. You know, we've been traveling with LightWise. We've been taking the Westcott Flex Lights. We've got two of them. Oh, yeah. Two of them fit right in one of the bags with the notebook, with some other stuff, with tripods, with... It's amazing what we get in that thing. Um, and it's so easy. It's just so easy to travel uh, with that stuff. And uh, and even the FedEx guys, uh, when, when we drop it off at FedEx, they always go, where'd you get these? These are cool bags. Um, and we put the TSA locks on them. Life's good. We haven't had any issues. Yeah. And uh, oh, and you know great. what? They've traveled a lot. They're not even scuffed. They look good. Huh. So no complaints. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Some of the some of the returns we get, and people, uh, you know, something breaks, or people send pictures of their bag that's been around the world thirty times. 30. Some of these people really, you know, you'd think. You think they were living in it because it's just they they they're able to really really uh, do a lot of damage to some of the bags, mm -hmm. but most of the time they you know I mean all of the bags I have maybe I just don't work hard enough, but um, they're all uh, you know still working even the version ones we've come out with and I'm you know don't really upgrade some of the bags because yeah. I just like to see how long this thing. But you know we've been around it, you know since two thousand and five. So uh, my camera's bags are still rolling fine. And you, you, know, you know what it is? Some them. people really treat their cameras like crap. Not the cameras, the bags. <laughs> I've seen people throw them, kick them, and it's like, no, don't do that. Um, and they treat their gear like trash. I mean, I've seen people break cameras, and you just go, you guys are idiots. What are you doing? Um, they don't care. And, and that's why a lot of times we've seen damage. People just overdo it. They'll step on. They'll stand on a bag, and you're like, "No, what are you doing?" Um, you know, I've I've seen it. We had one guy once years ago. He broke one of our tripods. Like, it's really hard to break a Manfrotto. You got to really beat it up. And we're like, but and look look how people treat rent cars. <laughs> Same idea. Yeah. Um, like no. I, like I said, I came from the uh, you know the, the newspaper business as a still photographer for the mm -hmm. San Francisco Examiner, and um, the staff uh, literally half the staff would just literally throw their camera equipment in the back of the car right. and it all tumble yeah. around while they're driving. And back in the film days, it seems like those cameras, you know, the the Canon F ones and mm -hmm. the Nikon, uh, you know, the the F twos and things like that, or yeah. even the F three. Uh, those things were almost indestructible. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had uh, I I was shooting basketball one time with a uh, with an F three and uh, and the one of the players wrapped his foot around my camera strap somehow and kicked the camera all the way out uh. of the court and think tumbled. They had to stop the game, but uh, you know, just picked the camera back up and kept shooting wow. after this Wait. thing got kicked completely across the court. Well, and it's interesting, Harold, who's just about ten feet from me, and he's man, he's running the show right now. He bought my Canon 5 DSR, which is a pretty nice, hefty uh, camera. It's like the 5D Mark III. It's, it's solid with a battery grip. And, and we were doing, he was doing a video shoot one time, and he put it on the tripod, and it just fell off. It just fell off. It hit the ground, dented the ground, nothing. Not a dent on the camera, lens, nothing broke. It's like, wow, that, those things can take a licking. No, no problem. Yeah. We were shocked. Yeah. Um, they, I had that happen on my Panasonic GH5. It fell out of a bag. Uh, it was my fault. I, I thought it was <laughs> zippered up, and, and it wasn't zippered. I went, oh, no. I saw it fly by me just going, huh. And the camera hit, bounced three times. The lens did get sheared off. But the camera, not a scratch. Yeah. Well built. I, well, that, I yeah. just did that um, about three weeks ago in my... Uh, uh, my little studio is uh, picked yep. up the camera bag and I hadn't zipped it and yeah. literally everything fell out of it. It's I mean, painful, it wasn't isn't that it? High. <laughs> it's, yeah. 
You know, when that when all that stuff hits concrete, it's not the sound you want to hear. No, no. Did anything break? Nothing broke. That's good. Nope. That's good. Just my just just my heart. The heart. Yeah, the heart. <laughs> like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, are you still oh. there? I am. Yes, I keep fading in and out. But I was going to say, what what amazes me with all the the, the camera bags these days, the ones that we had years ago, they're about the same size, but nowadays they seem to packing so much more they're so much more efficient the way the the designs are made and uh the, the thinner but they had a, a tougher quality than the were before and it's it just amazes me like we're all wanting the the biggest bag but with the smallest footprint and we seem to be getting it so yeah. uh, as i said we seem to be able to to carry more on a smaller uh, pa smaller parcel but it's just quite amazing all the quality of the bags that are coming out and Kurt, yeah, well, well, Kurt. One thing, following up on what Jeff said, you know, when we first get these bags, we're sitting there going, "How do we redo this?" Hmm. Um, some of them are tricky. It's, you've got to really get that spatial relationship. Go, okay, I got this thing. I can put that there, because they're very clever. And then we're like idiots with them. Like, what do we do? Um, have you ever? I don't know if it's. I haven't looked on your website, but have you ever thought of putting like sample images of what? what you could do with some of the inserts to give people more ideas. I know you have pictures usually when you buy them, which are really helpful, but every so often you run into a, how do I get this in there and how do I manage to get, and that's where it gets tricky sometimes. Right. I know a good idea. So some I know a good idea. I know a good idea for you, Kurt. There would be another one to put on the website with the, there's the bag and an extra $50. We configure it for a GH5 with this, the 12 to 60 lens. <laughs> and they said that would be a good business for somebody. We'll configure your bag to mm -hmm. this camera. They have all the cameras available. I thought I'd pay the extra $50. I, I would like too. Rick. Yeah, I would too. Three weeks. To, <laughs> yes, I would have spent 50 bucks to get somebody to just configure, configure it to what I do have. Yep. Yeah. Well, I give you a little trick. All right, here. So, if you imagine you get a pig, you get a fairly large piece of paper, even the one that comes with the picture on it um, mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. our bag. Well, those, you know, it's really hard to configure those Velcro kind of, yep. you know, hook and loop stuff. But if you slide a piece of paper in between the hook and loop and the side of the bag, and then position it, and then pull uh -huh. that piece of paper out. It sticks, so Clever. you can pretty much put it anywhere mm. you want in that, and then yeah. pull those two pieces of paper out, and then it stays. So and that's why he gets paid the big people, bucks. <laughs> yeah, mm. there's there's actually people that we've had people call our uh, our customer service line and um, and talk about the fact that they've taken the dividers out of their bag and they can't put them back. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I have been in Velcro hell every so often because I'm going okay I've almost got it and then the other one flips and I go oh, no now it's stuck and and yeah. I go I'm, I'm an idiot I, I can handle really complex things but not this and yeah um, you know that's a great idea the paper never thought of that hmm. <laughs> it's it, it, it's uh, uh, one of our um, uh, uh, Gene Sutton who is finally he's retired but he was the one that first showed me that and I was like you know what that's just great. That's yep. really, really good. But I mean, as far as the designs go, I mean, you know, Doug Murdoch, who, um, you know, is, a, is the you know president and CD, CEO of our company, he he is now um, you know pretty much living in the factory. And uh, you, you know, the bags are bigger on the inside than they are on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he's able to just you know think of these things. And we've got some really, really great guys. Uh, uh, Joe Hansen, who and Mike Sturm, who are our designers, and these guys are able to like create things, um, and you know, because their mom taught them how to sew years yep. ago, and and uh, they know how to do just make this stuff work, and um, well, you know, it's fascinating. I, I know when we got some of the logistics bags, they come in a certain arrangement, and then we made a double story out of half of it, so we have on the bottom part maybe the things we don't want to move at all, the top part things we want to get to and we were going this is cool we just made a two-story bag out of part of this just with the uh, dividers and it really gives us a ton of flexibility especially for the smaller like audio parts or anything else where we don't want it too big or too small you want to kind of keep it from flying around in there it, it works like a champ that we could figure out 
It's only sometimes, especially when we get like a curve part, we're trying to get something in the curve part of it going, how are we going to do this? Um, yeah. Usually we work it out, but it is funny. The paper technique is going to save us time. Got to try that. It, it will. And so one of the other things that I do um, uh, is a lot of times I'll put my lenses up at the top of the bag where it's curved. Mm. And, uh, you know, so they're, yeah. they're round and the, the front, the top of it's round. So I'll put the square things like the, you know, camera bodies at the bottom and then I'll put the lenses up and around the top. So I've pretty much been able to repack things because a lot of times what I do is when I pack a bag, I will pack everything in it and I will also pack a camera that is got a lens on it, that's got a, mm -hmm. a card in it, that's got batteries in it, that's completely, yep. uh, you know, the card is com is completely blank and it's just ready to go. All I have to do is turn it on and I can I start shooting. Um, that's great. And that, and that is one of the, the tricks of being a, a, a news photographer, is yep. not having to look for your equipment and put the lens on it and then find a card and get a battery and get it all going. Um, just have something, one thing ready to go. That's great. So your nickname is going to be Jimmy Olsen from now on, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, before it's, we leave, I've, it's I've, just a, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, was just I can tell you all kinds of stories. Yeah. Oh, I can um, imagine. We just, like last last week, we were so. This is a kind of a pandemonium story. It's so I finally got a little bit of vacation, and we were up on a houseboat. This is the uh, like last weekend, uh, 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 and we were up in Lake uh, Lake in Northern California, and we're on a houseboat, and we got five photographers on the houseboat, hmm. and. Um, and so we just got on this thing. We're just finally going up and we figured we'd get away from the, the marina where, you know, there was a bunch of people and uh, it's Labor Day weekend. And so we're we're cruising along and now we've got five photographers. I'm driving the boat and we, Deanne sees something in the water and uh, I'm like, son of a gun, it's a, it's a big black bear swimming across the main oh, body gosh. of the lake. <laughs> so now we've got five photographers with think tank bags all just piled in a big pile in the back of this thing. And they all, you, if you saw this, it was just, it would crack you up. Of all the photographers, everybody running to their bag, trying to get their camera equipment out and trying to get their lenses before this bear took off uh, and uh, went straight up the hill. Well, the person that was shooting video on the iPhone got really the best stuff. <laughs> oh, how funny. <laughs> so anyway, but it, it was, uh, that was the funniest part. But the, it was really beautiful being able to see that bear across the Yeah, lake. that's amazing. One of those rare moments. And, oh. and be before we leave today, I have a question for you on a bag. For example, do you have any bags that aren't messenger bags where you can, like, slide a camera out all ready to go? Anything like that? Um, you know, we do have uh, uh, a couple of bags like that. And, um, you know, there's a bag called the Photocross that's pretty Photocross. good for that. Okay. Yeah. There's Photocross 10, which is kind of, take a look at that. That's a... Ten pretty interesting little bag and it you know kind of comes around you and you can pull your camera out and it's oh, all ergonomically made and yeah i'll, t I'll take a look so, at that because sometimes yeah i want to carry different things and i've always been afraid that my my messenger would fall or never does the velcro holds it perfectly never had a problem with it uh, i could have the website has yeah. so much gear on it and i mean i i lose track of uh of how much we have i mean in the names you know they sometimes i even get them confused <laughs> yeah I, I believe it there's a lot there's some great stuff well kurt it's again a pleasure having you on we're looking forward to see what you guys come up with next and um and we'll promise to have you on not three years from now because i was going we never <laughs> had Kurt. Right. it's been years what's going on so um we like i said we love any time yeah, and you guys do a yeah. great job. We just love it. Actually, Diana, Di your wife was coming out with a with a woman's line. I remember last time we talked, she was just coming out with them. How did that work out? Right. Uh, it, it worked out pretty good. Um, it wasn't one of our major sellers, mm. but it, uh, you know, I ended up carrying it around for her uh, a, a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. So that worked, that she had the <laughs> ideal bag. <laughs> 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 didn't work in your eyes <laughs> that's funny well again Kurt we appreciate yeah. you coming on great success in the future and uh, we'll be in touch all right well thanks Rick and Jeff you guys are great yeah. and um, I you know look at your you know blogs and 
um, stuff a lot. And uh, when I have time, I you know watch your show. Oh, great! Appreciate it. And, Thanks uh, for that. And we always talk about think tanks. So you've probably seen that where we say, "Hey, we just got back. Use the producer bag. We've got this. Got this bag. Messenger." And uh, and and it's funny how many photographers we've interviewed throughout the years. Uh, and they all say, "What's your favorite messenger bag?" Oh, think tank. I used to. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, I mean, I, I have the philosophy of you know, use what works for you, and uh, mm -hmm. we just try to make you know everything that could possibly work for you. Yeah. But you know, <clears throat> there's it's you know, it's a it's a big world out there, and uh, you yeah, know, there's a lot of things to do. Yeah, there is, and there's a lot of places to pack it. You guys do a good job. Anyway, well, thanks again, Packing and we will see you next time. And Jeff, have a good one. And yes. if you're watching or subscribing, um, come back next week. We'll have another show. Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye for now.